Amen. Praise the Lord. You remember what we studied about last week? Anybody remember? Strongest man in the Bible? Samson. Samson. Praise the Lord, Samson. I want to, if I can, continue this. By no means, it really have a give this four chapters in the book of Judges. I really haven't. You know, we just been like a a survey or overview of this lesson. It, we really hadn't read no, no details in it. Samson, since I was a little old boy, he was always one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I guess because of his strength, you know, and the things he'd done. But uh, if you would this morning, we'll get right into the lesson. I want you to join in. And I think the available screen is available this morning. And uh, we'll start right off. And I'm going to lay my foundation this morning. And Judges, book of Judges, chapter 16 and verse 4. Let's pull that up. Then I'm going to lay a foundation and I'll give a title. And it came to pass afterwards. Afterwards is a long word, and it came to pass. That's a lot of sayings. And, I, and I've said so many times this church in all my life, time is our biggest enemy or our, our biggest enemy friend time and it came to pass afterwards we know that God had called Samson to be what preacher David 15 16 17 judge whatever uh, uh, the Canaanites Israelites back in the promised land and he uh God calls Samson and, it, and he made this free vow said uh I, I don't want you to touch no dead bodies and no alcohol, no wine or strong drink, which they had available plenty in that, in that Old Testament day, all kinds of stuff mixed with drugs and everything else. And I don't want you to get your hair cut. Yeah, Nazarene, Nazarite vow. And it came to pass afterwards that he loved a, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. If I can this morning, I want to speak on this subject very briefly this morning and try to, you know, where you take a break for worship service. I want to speak on briefly this morning's subject, Delilah's in the land. Delilah's in the land. You might say, well, I, I'm not going to do like Samson. I'm not going to have a Delilah in my life. But you know, Delilah, scholar, Bible scholars say once, commentators say that Delilah, you can have the spirit of Delilah. And it's what it simply means. It's just a sinful Think, to be involved in sin. Now, I thought about this morning. We live in some of the critical days, I think. I think, first my opinion, I think our nation this morning is more divided this morning than it was prior to the Civil War days back in 1859, 1860, that time frame, we'll start in 61. I, I think we're more divided. And we're divided against mighty sinful things this morning. Our mind has all been on road versus way this way this week. We know that, and, and uh, I can say a lot about it. And I hope to make a couple of mentions of that before I finish the lesson. But as Christians, we all face the Delilahs in the land. Delilah don't mean it's a woman. Delilah can be a man. Delilah can be any kind of form of thing that Satan tempts you. Does this leave God? I mean. If you look at Samson's life, he's, I've seen preachers in my life. Samson, the Spirit of God would come upon him, and he would, he would slay 30 men. All right? He, and uh, did, Samson had a lot of disappointments. Uh, his wife married someone else and had a child, if you know anything about uh, Samson's history, that he slew 30 men. And the Philistines come in and killed uh, uh, Timnath, which was the latest name from Timnath. Uh, that's what they call Timnath. 
killed her and her father. All right, the story goes on, the story goes, goes on. He caught 300 foxes and, and tied their tails together. They brought down their corn, their wine, and their vineyards. Or I say wine, vineyards, and olive groves, you might say. It goes on and on. Then Samson would kill a thousand men. He would go to Gaza, or Gaza. He would go there and, and take the heavy doors of the, of, of the place, like I see, like a Philistine. It was actually the god Dagon, which was the fish god. But, Doing about Old Testament history, and what he what he just took the gates and carried them thirty some miles from Gaza all the way up to Hebron, in the land of modern day Israel. Today. I don't know how that man done that. They say it might have weighed three or four tons those gates posted of that gate. I don't know. They say it's like sixty feet high. I knew some of the gates uh, was high in Israel back in those days. But laying a foundation, Delilah's in the land in twenty twenty two. I tell you what we what we what we need to do, I don't do. Brother Tony, we don't need to give in. I talked to a lot of preachers since the pandemic pandemic has been over with. You know what their church is running? About 50 or 60 percent, brother, there what they did prior pandemic. That's telling me they said Delilah's in the land of church attendance. Yeah. They just don't go into church. What what they done? They done like Samson. They they give in. A lot of people give over, and a lot of people just give out. I will say one thing, and, I, and, uh, and Jake can detest, detest, uh, uh, confirm this right here. Uh, I, I look at my life uh, when I got, say, 22, 23 years old, and I look like I, I feel like sometimes I've done very little. But I'll say one, and I drug Jay to church, he was a youngest here and there, even he was a little tiny fella. Jay had me the nights we sang one time in a row, 32 nights in a row, whatever, 28. And I'd come home, I'd come home and take a shower and eat a hamburger to the church revival and sing that. But yet I hadn't, I hadn't done that much. The old songwriter said, I wish I'd have done more with Sam before God. We all need to do more. But I thank the Lord one thing, Brother David. I'm not going to rush out. I want to wear out. I don't want no Delilah's to be in my land. Delilah's come in all forms. Now what I want to do this morning is, and this is a story form, it's, it's a People say, well, I don't like history. Well, uh, Judges is one of the history books, 12 history books, first of the Bible. So we want to, we're going to talk just a little bit about Satan's strategy with Delilah against Samson. All right, if you would, let's see. Uh, let's look at verse 15, and it's just self-explanatory. It just tells it like it is. But if it don't say anything else, Let's don't give in to the Delilah's in the land. Let's don't give over to the Delilah's in the land. I'm going to tell you something, folks, Preacher David. You think the church is having a struggle now? If you can see 10 years from now, I will say this word. When this president, I'm telling you, I'm, I know all about the 501c, I, but political correctness has killed the church and the nation. But sad day for America when Roe versus Wade overturned that, that, that vote, that rule, federal law, 63, when the President of the United States says, it's a sad day for America. I think it's a joyful day for America. Amen. And I hope the other states, you know what? When our 13 colonies come together, this ain't got nothing to do with lesson, but just whatever. I will throw it in anyway. When our 13 regional colonies were formed together, they was actually 13 states but each one of them was self-governed. They had a right by the Tenth Amendment to pull out any time they wanted to, to whatever. The federal government could not override those 13 states to start off, off, off with. And I thank the Lord for the Supreme Court. I thank the Lord that the last three, Brother Bob, was conservative. Amen. We need more conservative. All right. Let's look at the scripture here. This is a Delilah talking to Samson now. Let's just look, look at it very carefully on the screen. And she said unto him, how canst thou say that you love me? I love thee with your heart or thine heart. It's not with me. Thou hast mocked me three times. And, and you know the story. Uh, they, uh, they did tie them in green ropes, one thing or another. And has not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. Samson being a Nazarite, 
he, uh, from the tribe of Dan. Samson knew, verse 8, Samson knew exactly when the Lord would come upon him. He could tell that. His strength was like no one ever lived. But Samson is just like some Christians and some preachers and deacons, maybe Sunday school teachers way back. The Lord would be upon them. I, I've, seen, I've seen preachers run revivals in two or three weeks, running around, drinking. Next thing you know, they're back on another revival somewhere else, back and forth. God is not pleased with that. God was not pleased with Samson. And I, can't, I don't have time to finish up actually the outcome of Samson, but we know for 20 years here that Samson was up and down. The spirit was upon him, then the flesh got into him. One, this prostitute, this prostitute, one thing or another. He would destroy all these, kill all these Philistines. But look at verse uh, 16. Verse 16. And it came to pass. There's another one that says, and it came to pass. Nowhere in the Bible do you find the words once upon a time. That's folklore. That's me if once upon a time, uh-uh. When the Bible said it came to pass, it came to pass. Now, here's how Satan works. Satan has never, never changed his strategy from getting, from getting Eve to be tempted to forbidden fruit or Eve to give her husband Adam. This is strategy Satan has always used. If you don't look at the book of James. James talked about it. Somebody said about, about a month ago here. Verse 16, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. And urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. The question is asked why couldn't Samson this lead to a place called Sorek, lead the woman named, uh, the bad lady named Delilah? Why didn't he just pull away? His flesh was too strong. And I'm gonna tell you something this morning. Brother Howard, the flesh and spirit is a tug of war. Years ago, I, t I taught a lesson about the spirit versus flesh. I had one man in the middle, then I had somebody with, with a rope, back and forth. Now, which one you lean toward is which one you're going to win. And that's exactly right. But Samson's flesh was so weak, he could not overcome the lawless in the land. Look what the Bible said in verse 16 again. She pressed him daily. That's why Satan does it, preacher David. You can, you could, uh, you can resist the devil. But you know what? I've heard that word so many times. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you resist the devil, you flee. But there's a word. There's a verse before that, ain't it? You got to draw. You got to resist the devil, but draw not not to God. But he he would. I, th I really think Samson would try to resist Delilah, but she pressed him daily. Pressed him. But she just couldn't overcome it. I seen drug addicts. I seen. I, I had an uncle, alcoholic. I had one that's in the Navy in World War II. Uh, once the pilots come in the Kamikaze pilots come in and he was on machine uh, anti-aircraft machine gun whatever and all that and after the war he walked the road and preacher David you know this man very uh, preacher, brother David very well he's kind of connect your family too by marriage he'd walk the road wait have you got two dollars well here I hate to give him that but he was so hooked on alcohol he just couldn't give it up I've seen other people hooked on things but think about Delilah. She pressed him daily with her words, and she urged him. You know, it looked like he could have walked away, preacher David, maybe, but she pressed him daily with her words. But she started urging him. The Bible says it, so that his soul was vexed. In other words, vexed unto death. What that simply means, preacher David, he was so troublesome and, tr and trial, he wanted to die. Why didn't Samson just get up and leave her alone? He didn't do that. Look at verse 17. This is just a historical story for him this morning. And here's what she said. That he told her all his heart. That's a mistake right there. And said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If, if I be shaven, then my strength will come for me and shall become weak and be like other men. She didn't know anything about God. The God she worshipped, was down, down in the temple in Gaza, Dagon, and he finds throughout the Old Testament. Dagon, they say, Jay, I, I might have this back, but Dagon, they said through uh, mythology they believed in that, that was it uh, Baal was his father or something like that? Am I right? I way back, remember, sir. But anyway, she didn't know anything about, about the God. She knew Santa had long hair. Why did she do this right here? Why did Delilah go after Santa with all she could? One thing calls money. And I'm going to tell you something. Materialism and money has been a downfall for a lot of Christians. 
You know, you, you can own money, but when money owns you, that's the problem. I have never had that problem, Mr. David. Materialism, uh-uh. Now, I, I, I'm satisfied a little two or three acres we live on, me and Jay, four or five acres for together. I, I'm satisfied with that. Probably happy as I've ever been uh, in my life, really. I told Preacher David that some time ago. Yeah. We don't, we ain't got millions and millions of dollars owed, can't pay back one thing that doesn't worry you to death. We don't have that. But she wanted money, and people will do about anything for money. So she wanted money. All right, look at verse 18. I won't be long this morning. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord's. That Lord's here is not, not, uh, not the God, the Lord we're talking about. The, the Lord's were, uh, were the Philistines. Engage her there. And called the Lord's of the Philistines and say, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her and brought her money in her hand. Look at verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. Now, I'm going to tell you something right here. Nowhere did the Bible say, Preacher David, you might correct me, you and Jay, from right, if I'm wrong. He wasn't supposed to drink no kind of wine. But this man of this caliber, how big was Goliath? I mean, how big was Samson? I don't know. But she made him sleep upon her knees. I really think she, alcohol, wine, whatever, drugs, whatever, she made her sleep. Look at her. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. Now, a man this smart as Samson was in the physical, not spiritual. He had a spiritual problem. You know good and well, if you had seven locks of hair, probably you can imagine Samson is getting on maybe uh, 35, 36 years old, Jay Water, 37 probably, this time frame here. Never had a razor, never cut his hair. Had seven locks. And he lay down. And he didn't know anything about getting a haircut. You know good and well. I've never been in a barber chair when I said I didn't know I got a haircut. But Samson, the influence Delilah had. Delilah's in the land. Cut off the seven locks of hair in his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. From him. Look at verse 20. And she said, the fellow saints be upon thee, Samson. And he woke out of sleep. This is several times. She had already done it three times. He had, uh, uh, she said she had, that Samson tricked her. Anyway, verse 20 said, And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before. I'll really shake myself, get my composure. I'll shake myself. And the Bible said, And he went. He didn't know that the Lord had departed from him. You know, it's amazing, Preacher David. I say again about preachers, I, even Christians, even church members, that claim to be a Christian. And they, and they thought they was right with God, but when a situation happened, they called on God. He was nowhere to be found. I've seen that so many times. Well, you have too in my life. And look at verse 21. And the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Now, Part of my story this morning, Delilah's in the land. I'm going to stop right here. There's another lesson, Jay, that comes behind us here. But for the sake of time, I, I didn't want to go there this morning. Uh, I want to concentrate today on Delilah's in the land. The Philistines took him. This is the first time, and probably, uh, Preacher David, maybe 15 years the Philistines took him. I, I read back, and how in the world did he take a jawbone of, of a donkey and, and kill thousand men. It had to be the Spirit of the Lord come upon him. Nobody could ever do that. I've seen some Westerners and some people could fight mighty good, but nothing could take a jawbone and slay a thousand people. Now there's a lot of stories in there, uh, but how could you take all these big old heavy gates and doors of the, of the, of the temple, of uh, gates or how could he take this here and travel 30 some miles to a place called Hebron? How could he have done it? The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. But a lot of times, if you allow Delilah to come in the land, Delilah to come in your house, you can shake yourself and the Spirit of God's gone. What a bad feeling. What a bad feeling to wake up and know the presence of God has taken from you. Now, let me think about verse 21, and I'm going to conclude with the scripture this morning, verse 21. But the fellow saints took him and put out his eyes. Preacher David, 
the modern generation now know we, we'll go get a battery pack drill and we'll drill through a board of water. But back in those days, I remember when I was a little boy, you remember the old bracing bit? My granddad was an old time carpenter, he had a bracing bit. But back in those days, they had a piece of wood and he took Samson's eyes, back in his older days, and just took it, put it in his eyes and just drilled his eyeball all out of his eyes. Can you imagine the pain he suffered? And they brought him down to Gaza and they bound him with fetters of brass. Fetters of brass, that's a real strong way, for like handcuffs and, and shackles. And so, but that wouldn't have been nothing to him when the Spirit of God was upon him. But now, that bound him. And it did grind in the prison house. Debatable about what he'd done in the prison house. Uh, Steve said, well, he hooked him to a millstone. He went round and round. Well, I don't know so much about that. Really, that didn't come popular two or three more centuries later. But whatever. Nevertheless, he did grind in the prison house. And he thought about a lot of things he had done. Now, I'm going to stop right there, friend of Texas. I'm not going into how Samson slayed the 3,000, all the dignitaries and all the lords and all the people and, uh, that worship Dagon. But I want to think about it closing this morning. There's Delilah's in the land. It worked me so much uh, the way our country. Brother David, our country is not like it was being you joined the military back then. It's a different time. It's a different world, different world. You might say, well, how is Delilah's in the land? You know, our country, as we speak this morning, our country is falling apart, Brother Bob. It's falling apart. Who, ever, who would have thought? I'm over 70 years old. Me and Brother David about the same age. Not much different, a little bit. But uh, I would have never dreamed that Ory County Council would have met last Tuesday night for Preacher David. And he was discussed. The gay mark pride, the rainbow people, LGBTQ, whatever they call the initials now, keep changing. Who would ever have thought that our country would, would, would allow such a type of people to even, even, even have a meeting like that? It wasn't the work. In fact, when I joined the military, uh, I know one, one man I talked to overseas. He said, I'm, I'm, I can't stand this Air Force. I'm getting out of there. I can't copy the Morse code. I, I, I'm about to lose my mind. And he said, I said, well, you can't get out. He said, there's one way I can get out. And he told me what he was going to do, and Lord forbid. As far as I know, they, they, they kicked him out of service. He disappeared it quick, quickly. But now, don't tell, don't ask, whatever. It, it's accepted part. And I'm going to tell you, Preacher David, our country's falling apart so much that one day, if you keep on preaching the next 10 or 15 years, hate speech. If you tell a person you're not saved, you're going to hell, hate crimes, racial slurs, that's coming. That is coming. Amen. That's coming. What happened, what, how, what happened to Peter, James, and John right, at, right after the day of Pentecost? Right after in Acts 3, they whipped and said, don't preach no more in his name, right? That's coming to our country. Our country's falling apart. It's, it's falling apart. And uh, I don't want to have to Roe v. Wade. I know it goes back to the, the temper member of individual states. But I wouldn't be surprised if the federal gov government don't try to override that. But nevertheless, our country is falling apart. You know, not only is our country falling apart, our churches are falling away. You know, they very few churches now have midweek prayer service Wednesday night. I mean, it's a big church. You'd be surprised. They have Sunday morning. They'll get together on Sunday night for a meal or activities. I've been to church with some places like that. And that was 20 years ago. They called off Sunday night service then, some of the bigger Big name church denomination. And no Wednesday night service. Now, SMO, Sunday morning only, definitely have service. They got other activities they want to do. So not only is our country falling apart, our churches are falling away. And I hate to say it's lo most churches are social clubs. You'd be surprised, uh, the last before the pandemic came, Jay Bird, we stayed with Jay Bird about 13, 14 years, what it was. We saw it all kind of places. You just not believe. They would have, they would, ha they would have some churches. J. Bird knows two of them. I'm thinking about space. One of them was 1,160 people at Sunday morning singing. Then another church had like 50 or 60. But we sat. I sat on the front seat and had to survive a rock band in a church. Then they featured us last because we did bluegrass something awful. But we was, we tailed the, the thing on that day. We was forced to come on. I think everybody's tired. Of time we could come on. But how in the world can churches do that? I know churches right now. Our churches are falling away. These churches that they want to get the spirit moving, so they'll come here and plug a fog machine in. That's not the Shekinah glory. 
That's why that Old Testament t temple that Isaiah wrote. So churches are falling away. I, I may, maybe this lesson is not going like, like I prayed and asked, but still, you get the point. There's Delilah's in the land. What will be your Delilah this morning? Well, I tell you, there's a Delilah after you this morning. Preach today, he's a pastor. They went after you too. You might come through materialism. You might come through morality. Our country is torn apart, all apart. Not only our country, the city and the county is. Falling away, falling away. But you know, not only is our country falling away and our churches are falling apart, we'll get it back with whatever. But the churches, but it's, our churches are just like Samson. I'm afraid, Preacher David, that a lot of church people as Christians is put their head in Delilah's lap. You might say, hey, yeah, I can prove it. Where's everybody at this morning? Come back tonight, might be less. Dr. George Lovell, years ago, I was laid in Brickles, had his first Baptist preacher. Got talking to Southern Baptist, got talking things. He said, uh, Brother Lewis, uh, in Southern Baptist, this has been a long, long time. Jay used to play a little boy here. I've done how to house Dr. Lovell. He said that uh, Sunday morning had the big number. Sunday night, you cut out 50%. Wednesday night, down, you cut out another 50%. If that was the case many, many years ago, what in the world is it today? Most people has their, has their head in Delilah's lap. And this right here will be our verdict right here if we don't get our heads out of Delilah's lap, if our country don't come back, our nation, whatever. Now, I hear well-known evangelists. I tell you what I listen to on TV most time. I go to bed with preachers preaching every night. Different one, you know. One night. I go to bed with them. I like it. But anyway, I, I, I go to bed and preachers preaching, and then I got to be too with the, the, the preacher. I listen to a lot of music too. But the problem, if, if God don't sunk, come back, what in the world is going to happen if we got our head in Delilah's lap? What is going to happen? You know what? Now, I'm not saying that I can't fall. Any of us can fall. Any of us can fall backwards. God forbid, I'd rather die than fall backwards or give in or give over or give out. I don't want to do that. But there's the Lilas in the land this morning. There's the Lilas in the land. I want to finish this morning. If you got your hymn on your back, you feel, I want you to pull this, put this song there. I'll tell you what page is a little bit of what's going on about this song here. Uh, I think it's 210. Am I right about that? I want to enter that. Look, the title of anyway, the title of the song, you can get the number. The title of the song is The Great Joke of the Morning. And a lot of people say, well, I, I, I just don't believe in, in abortions. I don't believe in the, the, the transgender or whatever the devices that Delilah is putting on the land. I don't believe in this kind of stuff. But you know what? I wish the silent majority, Preacher David, would be unsilent now. And we are a silent majority to a certain extent. But what do we do to try to take our hands, our heads out of Delilah's lap this morning? God forbid I'd ever put my head in Delilah's lap, in Delilah's lap. Let's look at this song a minute. What page is on this old song? Was it two or whatever? Say again. Okay, two eleven. This there's a few words in this song that's always intriguing me to a certain extent. You might say it's two eleven. Two oh eight. I'm sorry. Two eight. I ain't got to hear it later. Okay. All right. This song here. I know about the history song. This song was wrote in 1894. You might say, how in the world could time have been so, so bad in, in 1894? And I want to look at the third verse. And uh, the third line of music here. Get the third verse and come on, skip three. And I want to start right with the gambler. This is where the church is at. You might say, well... I wouldn't do this right here. I wouldn't do that. I don't have my head in the line of that. But I want to look how God's inclusive this morning. If you can do good, you're supposed to do good. Now, I'm, and 
Uh, I can say to Sheriff in political correctness, I think everyone should vote. If, I tell you what, see what good the last three Supreme Court justices, conservative, that was put in office to the last administration. All right. We should vote. Vote your choice, whatever. But look at it. Look at what it says right here. Everybody got it? The gambler was there and the drunkard. So far, you got that right. All right. The gambler was there and the drunkard. You might say, well, that's the one that's got his head. He's got his head in the line of sleep. He ought to know not be a drunkard. We know that's what the world would be drunkard. But look at the other sentence. Comma. And the man that sold him to drink. It's just as wrong for a person to deliver the drinks as a person that drinks the drink. Everybody agree with that? Now, this is not, and I, I know this is not good teaching by no means. In 1894, it didn't work good. Great granddad's day, I'm sure, I sure it didn't work good. But the gambler was there and the drunkard and the man that had sold him the drink where the people who gave them the license to go in hell, they did sing. You can be guilty without Delilah. You lay your head in Delilah's lap. I say we, uh, we are the majority, this, I mean the minority this morning, and, and we get less and less. And I'm not being first uh, pessimist this morning, but we are. I hear the great evangelists on TV saying that there uh, have been two great awakenings, and again, there'll be another great awakening. Nowhere, Preacher David. Preacher David, you ever read the Bible, there'll be another great awakening? The Bible tells me that evil doers get worse and worse, and, and, and times are waxed, grow worse and worse. And I, I thought about the ones that were protesting about Roe v. Wade this week. The Bible says they love darkness rather than light on them. They're in darkness. They're in darkness. And if they approve of abortion clinic, parent plan, planhood, whatever, what all that, the doctors, nurses, whatever, if you approve of this right here and don't vote against it, this song, your great judge of morning, left very few people out. Now, I want to share one thing with you. I said I, wouldn't, I didn't have much scripture to read this morning. Maybe Jay might want to finish about Delilah, I mean about Samson. I've had several Delilahs that come in my life. Many, many years ago, and, and Jay remembers this, I had a phone call. They needed this man here, national television. This gospel group was national. I'm if I call the name, most people recognize the name right now this morning. Man called me, one of the band members. We're coming to call me motor in Wednesday afternoon. So I knocked up early, went out, out there. And I drove out the motor in, saying like there was a silver eagle along in this sanctuary here. Big old silver white silver eagle. About that time, the head man, the top dog, the whole thing come in the door. Shook hands with him. His hair was right here, not against hair, I mean, whatever, but I'm just telling you how it was back those days. Rolex watches, a ring on every finger, and I, he said, I, I talked a little bit about him. He said, that was Wednesday afternoon, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, we leave in here the next day, which is Thursday at 2 o'clock, and the last words he told me, he said, be on the bus. I went home and didn't tell, I don't want to tell, I don't want to tell nobody about it, I can't remember, a long time ago. And that was Delilah, God, or the devil rather, had sent to me. I could have laid my, I could have laid my head in Delilah's lap. Delilah's in the lamp. I wouldn't do it. I was laid brick. Here come one thirty, two o'clock. I kept looking at what. I said, "Well, the bus is going now. The bus is going now." The story don't finish here. Look, the remainder of the story is, they were. If I'd have joined that band, there'd been five piece band, drummers and bass and. Piano, country, that kind of southern gospel stuff, country style. Three of them probably still serving life sentences, or might be out by now. They were serving long prison sentences. They got they got uh, involved in money embezzlement. I told a while ago, Delilah, Satan uses money and materialism. They got involved in that and mocking the spirit. And I know three of them, I can call names. I, Jay, you know one of them very well. He's, he served about 13, 14 years in prison. The other man, the keyboard player, piano player, he, he served a long pre pre prison term. Last time I heard, the man's out now because the same one tells me again, but he stayed in Florida for a long time in the, in the prison system in Florida. What if I'd have 
what if I'd have been on the bus? What would it cost me, Sister Elizabeth? It cost me better. I don't know what it cost me. But that's one time that I was telling you, I'm glad I didn't put my head in Delilah's lap. And that's just one thing to me. There's other situations you ought to be in too. But if you don't learn any, remember anything this morning, let's don't put our head in Delilah's lap. I can say again, Satan's strategy had never changed. He wants to divide and conquer. That's, that's what he do in the military, divide and conquer. But Preacher David, we're aware of Satan's devices, aren't we? So much for Anybody got a comment or question? I, I've enjoyed Samson. I, uh, they was four long chapters, but I, I just kind of sort of overviewed a little bit of Samson. Let's don't do like Samson. Now, God did give me strength one more time. That'd be another time, another lesson, didn't he? But anybody comment or question about anybody? Any, any experience? Anything? And that's not only Delilah. Brother David's come along. Maybe in other ones. But that's probably one of the biggest ones. But I've seen results of what just happened to these people that was in this group, this band. I know for a fact it was. I knew two of them. One very well. All right. So we'll take a break now. And I, you know, good teacher will be back next next week. And I, I guess he'll continue Matthew. But I've enjoyed the last two weeks. Uh, I don't feel like I could give it justice.